How about today I get you footage of all the Sierra flowers I see? Hey, I'm Danny, aka Topless. I'm hiking the Pacific Crest Trail from Mexico to Canada. I'm currently in the Sierras. Um, I'm at 874.8 miles in. And today I'm pushing for a 25 mile a day so I can hit 900 today. So, see how that goes. <laughs> I uh, try to get up and get moving quickly because the mosquitoes around here are pretty rough. So it's about 6.45. I was actually try having a hard time getting out of the tent and getting moving because I could see all the mosquitoes on the other side of the net. <laughs> but did everything I could inside the tent, threw my bag out, and then Packed up the tent as quickly as possible and got moving. So, we'll see what happens. I've got two days worth of food left and that should be just plenty. I got 35 miles to go before my exit from the Sierras for a supply stop in Mammoth. And actually, I should probably look it up to see if there's like a long hike to get to the civilization from that junction or if it's going to drop me off in a parking lot or something so I'll get back to you on that one <laughs> today I'm going to be going over Silver Pass I think is the name of it it's not as big as the ones I've been doing the last three days but at this altitude any uphill is rough as you can hear in my breath right now I noticed a little bit of an issue here. Uh, I put the shock cord in for my laces and I love it. But after almost 900 miles, you can see the casing on this one has busted. And that's partially because right here, you can see the seam coming out. Like this is like rubbing against the shock cord and, and just basically rubbed the casing enough to make it pop. So you can see all the bungee that's inside. So hopefully when I get to Mammoth, I'll be able to buy some new shock cord. If not, I'm going to have to go with a regular cord, which will work just as well, except you won't be able to slip in and out of the shoes like I am right now. So I'm hoping to find more shock cord in Mammoth. Well, you know what? There's a gear shop in Bishop. Maybe that'll work. But in the meantime, I'm a little worried that this might snap today or tomorrow. So, yep. It's not really a big deal, but it's so crazy when you're like miles and miles from civilization that the littlest things become a point of contention because I don't have any backup shock cord. All right, I was able to rotate the whole thing and get the bad spot to be inside and no, no longer at the end or around the corner on one of those loops. So we'll see if this holds. <laughs> These ones are super tiny. These are super tiny. Especially compared to those ones that I showed you at the beginning. Check that out. As a kid, I would love that. It's like the size of my fist. It's like half the size of my fist. So intricate too. early in the day so this isn't open yet but I'll see if I can find some they're open later today these are cute just up ahead I think I see like some buttercups Oops. 
They're not open yet. A bunch of these are closed. A bunch of these are closed. It's just so early in the morning. Let's see if we'll see some more later. But they're all on the trail right here. Color's not coming through right. It's actually more of a bluish pink. And uh, compare that to these little, little tiny ones. Let's see if I can focus on them. Almost. There it goes. So as you can probably tell, I've been playing a game where I'm taking photos of flowers and the game's called Something Fresh. And uh, I explain it on my other playlist, which is all a bunch of hiker tips and hiker games and things like that. So I'm gonna put a link to that playlist and that video in the description so you can see the rules to the game. But it's a lot of fun. I play, I'm playing it today with Sierra Flowers. I also played it with Desert Flowers about a month ago. So I'll link to that video too. Oh wow, I wish that was open. Maybe later today I'll see another one. This guy is incredible. Camera does not want to focus. Wow. So many of them. These ones are such an odd shape. A whole bunch of them over here. Also, the flowers are fresh too, but this butterfly is pretty cool. These flowers are so tiny, but the plant is so big. compared to these leaves, which are humongous. I just found a really beautiful water source. There's a waterfall down here. There's another nice little one over here. Actually, it looks like a like a water slide. So far, I've only seen these growing all by themselves, like this. This is the third one I've seen all day. I love the lines between the petals. It's nice to see one open. All the other ones look like this at the moment. These are the ones that are in the shade. So not quite open yet.
Here's another one that's not quite open yet. And it's among all these little tiny, tiny... All of them are so tiny and they're all little bells. This one's just hidden in among all the others. Okay, here's a good shot of a bunch of them that are open. It's a little hard to see the stamens since the whole thing's just one color. There you go. We got a bunch of these guys just hiding back here in the shade. I almost walked right past these. For a second there, I thought they were these over here. The whole bush. Here's a random aside. Book recommendation. While I'm out here in the Sierras, I've been constantly reminded of one of my favorite books, which is Dr. Seuss's Oh, The Places You Will Go. It's incredible. In, in my opinion, it is his masterpiece. Uh, young and old, I really think you should get it and I really think you should read it almost every month. But anyways, it starts off with, congratulations, today is your day, which is a fantastic phrase. And the book ends with, your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. So I've been thinking about that a lot as I wake up in friggin' heaven and I get to climb these mountains, which is rough. But I think in my head, your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. So I just basically saturated my shirt in water in the last stream, and I'm hiking through the Sierras where there's not a lot of shade at the top, or the top of the passes. If you're watching this on my vlog, I just made uh, a through hiker tip that's on my other playlist for through hiker tips and I went into a lot of depth about how I've started soaking my shirt in water and all the various ways you can do it and the things to watch out for and uh, that's on my other playlist if you're watching this on my tips playlist just a reminder I also have a vlog of where I basically took a video every day going through the Pacific Crest Trail from Mexico to Canada. And right now, or at least today, I'm looking to cross mile marker 900. These ones are really tiny. I'm not 100% sure what to make of these, but they're really awesome. Also, right next to that, so we get here. these incredibly tiny, incredibly tiny compared to everything else. I'm not 100% sure what's going on. I'm not sure if those are flowers or not, but they're really cool and really tiny. Look at this incredible view. I'm not sure if these belong this mossy stuff in the back or not. 
They're hiding here under this rock. This is the top of Silver Pass. Gorgeous. All right, what I'm discovering is that I clearly want to go back to the bakery in Bishop. <laughs> the whole way up Silver Pass, I was chanting 25 miles bakery in Bishop. 25 miles bakery in Bishop. And that's what was like keeping me marching forward. So yeah, looks like I'm gonna be pushing to get back to Bishop. And now I'm trying to figure out if I want to stay one night or two. <laughs> So I should probably mention, 25 miles was my goal for today. I just double checked, I've got 12 miles left. Well, 12 and a half actually, so I'm literally halfway. I think it's about two o'clock, and the rest of the way is all downhill or flat. So it's looking pretty good. If I just stop taking pictures of all these flowers, like <laughs> I keep stopping like every 20 minutes and taking like these close-up shots and videos of all these flowers. <laughs> it just goes to show you can in fact stop and smell the roses even if you're doing a through hike on the PCT and you're trying to hit high mileage. You still get to see everything. I had this conversation with Cactus just a couple days ago where we do not agree with the people who say, hey, why you're rushing through the Sierras? you know stop and see something we feel that there is no difference between speed and taking a looking around and absorbing everything and stopping for the things that you want to stop for so yeah 25 miles a day and also getting all the flowers totally possible here's a beautiful alpine lake I just turned the corner to reveal this gigantic lake. Holy cow. There's the way I'm going. Here's something interesting. This is the third time I've come across this. Someone's been lining up rocks based on color. It's pretty interesting. Yet another gorgeous mountain lake. Holy cow. And I also hear running water. So let's go check that out. Oh wow, there's a bridge. So the lake is slowly filtering through here and off in that direction. Beautiful.
These are extremely tiny. This view is just stunning. Here it is again without those trees in the way. Unreal. Yeah, see? I'm not sure who's doing it, but I'm kind of digging it. I'm wondering if it's a game and they're carrying colored rocks forward, or if they're sitting down for a rest and finding colored rocks. It's really beautiful. Wow. Okay, slight change of plan. I was gonna go to mile marker 900 today. Thought that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, but I just checked my app and it turns out there is a campsite here at 989, sorry, 898, and then not another one until 905. And if you look at what I've been hiking on, it's kind of a ridge. And there's just, look at this behind me, like, this is what I've been hiking on. So it's been a couple miles now. And the idea of camping on any of this, wow. Here, yeah, look at all this in front of me. Yeah, the idea of camping on any of this is not really gonna happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that campsite that's coming up and camp at 898 hit mile 900 tomorrow morning. And if I camp at this campsite, then uh, I'll have 11 miles to Red's Meadow, which is where I'm gonna go to Mammoth and jump down to Bishop and go to that bakery. So otherwise the next campsite is at 905, which is a lot of miles to be doing with the sun setting right now. So cool, I'm actually kind of ex excited like I feel like I did a lot of miles today and uh, I've got a really easy hike tomorrow I'll probably be in Mammoth by like noonish, and be in Bishop uh, by the evening I'll probably be able to like hang out with a bunch of hikers and drink some beers and have some really good dinner it's gonna be awesome so yeah that's where we're at Well, the terrain just changed. Oh, but it's still pretty rocky. <laughs> it looks like the campsite that I was expecting to go to was already taken. So I'm going to see what I can find. So I know it looks like there's a lot of grass and stuff out here, but it's all bedrock. And honestly, you're not supposed to camp on random uh, wilderness surfaces. So part of Leave No Trace uh, is always walk and camp on durable surfaces. And for a recap on that, uh, you, you could check out my previous video back when I was at the Bud Farm. Uh, the Trail Angel Detour relayed some information he got from a, a ranger, which was just the seven uh, guidelines or principles of Leave No Trace. And so principle two was only walk and camp on durable surfaces. All right, I was getting a little scared there for a second. Thought I might have to hike to 905, but I just found this nice sandy area. It's a little bit sloped, but it's sand. It's a durable surface. So I'm not camping in any of this, by the way. I'm just doing a pan around. But yeah, I'm gonna camp right over here and just make it work. Well, that was a no-go. I found lots and lots of ants, like ant piles and ant colonies. So that's not a durable surface. <laughs> well, early on, I passed on a nice big flat rock because I wasn't in the mood to set up my tent. 
without stakes. And now I'm night hiking. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how far I end up going before I find something that's not slanted and also a durable surface. Worst case scenario, I know 905 is a tent site. All right, jackpot. I found a nice little sandy spot just big enough for my tent. Sweet.